evening, everyone. In Lions Nation, this is Roar Time, the Columbus Lions Coaches Show with head coach and director of football operations, Jason Gibson, your host, Rick Jacobson, and we are in season. Coach, fresh off a trip from Orlando, Florida, newest franchise, one of two in the National Arena League. Uh, first impressions on that first road trip? The arena's nice. <laughs> so a little under the weather. Um, the, the, it, was a, it was a good trip, as best you could have with, with, with taking the loss, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, I really didn't see that one coming. It, all, it really all kicked off with some situations that happened before the game. But um, uh, it was a uh, – we've got a good team. I'm not worried. I'm not panicking. I've told people before I kind of make jokes about it. You know, the Patriots started out one and two also. And every year people write them off. And every year they're, 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 they're in the show. So uh, I like the core group of players we have. We'll be fine, and uh, we've got to you know, get ready for the next week. You know, first thing we noticed, I was one of those who, who went to a local sports bar that we lined up to, to televise, carry the telecast of the game. And uh, I understood there was a situation with no place kicker eligible for this game. Tell right. us what happened and how. So here's what happens. So in the NAL, if you sign a contract and play in a game with another league, that's not the NAL or the NFL or CFL. Um, you're ineligible to play in the NAL. So it's kind of a weird rule. I, I do like it. It's kind of has some work comp issues with it, so we're not liable for other teams' players. But also, it's kind of like you don't want people saying, "Hey, we're going to go play in this league because they're going to promise me this, this, and this," and they wind up not getting it, which is typical. And then they want to go, oh, "Okay, let me go back to the NAL." Well, no. If you play the NAL, you don't play you know, with us. So, but what happens is the commissioner can't catch this rule. Not rule, I'm sorry, but take this back. The commissioner can't track all these transactions. You know, it's not his job to find out if the player played. It's actually on the other team's coaches to police themselves. Mm -hmm. So what happened was uh, our kicker, Jed Solomon, I turned the transaction in on Thursday night because you have to have your 26-man roster in by 7 p.m., 48 hours before the game. So I turned Jed's, Jed's name in. I didn't know he had kicked for the Georgia Doom. I had no idea. That and was the team. That the was the team. team. I didn't know, no idea. Um, and he didn't tell me. So what happened was one of, our, one of our friendly teams in the league, and I actually know who it was too, so uh, waited until Saturday morning at about 10 o'clock to turn it in. <laughs> and it wasn't even Orlando. It wasn't even the team we were playing. It was another team turned it in. So, uh, you know, good for them. Kudos. I'll put that in my bank. I'll remember. Um, so we had to play without a kicker. I didn't think it was going to be a problem, but it turned out to cost us the game. We'll go into that how in, in, in just a minute, but right. I couldn't help but notice that this team, the Georgia Doom from another league called the American Arena League, is going out of business or <laughs> on the fringes of same. Exactly. See, exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, I mean, most of them do, and... You know, so that's why they put the rule in place. Like I said, it kind of bit us in the butt a little bit, but we'll be okay. Ironically, um, I had to wonder why Derek Vaca, who had been our backup kicker and, and around Columbus almost right. year-round, why was he not available for re-signing? Uh, because he wasn't on a 26-man roster. You have to have all that stuff in before 48 hours before the game. So... It wouldn't have mattered. I mean, I couldn't have just signed a kicker or signed Derek to come down for the game real quick to kick. He wasn't. I had to release him to make room for Jed, and so it was too late anyway. Okay. Was there any chance that if you had found someone locally that no, qualified because you have to within have, the – you have to have them signed within 48 hours. So whoever is on your roster at Thursday night at 7 p.m. is who you can choose from. You can't just pick somebody up off the street. There you have it, the 48-hour rule, folks. Now – Let's get to the logistics of this. I remember in the history of the Lions, I think I recall one other game where you went without a kicker. What's it like? Can you game plan um, the entirety of uh, finding somebody who could kick deep, kick the way you want them to on kickoffs? Forget about yeah. the placement kicking. The major issue for me was really the fourth downs. And you couldn't kick field goal. And so if you were fourth and ten from your own five-yard line, you had to go for it. Put your defense in a bad situation. That happened once, um, and the defense actually held. So, uh, kicking off wise, it was just a matter of all right, let's go line it up. 
you know, to kick the ball down the field 20 yards. And it turned out to be Bones. So, you know, now you can kick two. Did you have anybody on the team that might have come to you and said, hey, coach, I kicked in high school or any of that? They all say that. I mean, that all these linemen come, hey, I can kick, hey, I can kick. So we had a little fun with it, let some guys kick. They'd kick one kick, and I would go, no, you're out. There's no way. So. On this year's team, who was the holder? Bones Bugante. So this man does a little <laughs> of everything. And, uh, now, that would have been a feat. If he could hold it and kick the extra point at the same time, uh, then that's a story for us to talk about. Was he not the most effective of those that you tried kicking off? As he far was. As depth? Him, and actually, Luke was too. Luke Collins, the quarterback. But you don't want both. You don't want your quarterback on the kickoff team. I would go after you and try to knock you out. Sure. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, let's morph over to the effectiveness of the offense that uh, you had talked about last week on Roar Time, yeah. and uh, how how did everybody do? Uh, it wasn't as effective as we thought it was going to be, but it's, it's getting there. Offensive line-wise, we knew nobody was going to get pressure. I got the best O-line in the league. Uh, you know, we didn't give up a sack. But uh, Orlando's credit, they got some good DBs. I, I, I like them. They, they played a good scheme. Uh, we have two rookie, I mean, we have two rookie uh, wide receivers. I have three receivers and a quarterback who've never played together before. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're learning the game together, learning each other. So for the most part, it's, it's, a, it's a process. I thought second half we looked a lot better than we did in the first half. We started making a lot more plays. Um, and we'll be, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Turnover battle. Looks like we may have lost that early. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to affect the, the uh Yeah, first outcome. play pick six. I mean, that doesn't happen. I've never seen that happen. But uh, we just underthrew the pass. And, uh, you know, they took it back to the house. And that kind of set the tone for the game. Because realistically, if you look at the game, they hit one deuce and they took a pick six back, but we outscored them offensively. You know, that we I think we scored six offensive touchdowns. They only scored five. So, um, you know, the, the turnovers kill you. I think we threw two picks. They threw two picks. So it kind of washed itself out a little bit. How do you feel Luke Collis did as far as timing and connection with his receivers? I thought he did well. Uh, obviously, he played a lot better. He'll tell you the same thing. Luke's not going to, you know, Luke's not happy with his performance. Uh, he expects more, but then again, it's it's working with three new receivers, a new offensive line, and and getting there. You don't we don't have the luxury right now of having uh, uh, people that have been together for six, seven, eight years. And um, but that's a good thing about it is we're going to be just as good after a week. I mean, you'll see a you'll see a you know huge improvement just from week one to week two, and it's only going to get better. Did the makeup of the Orlando Predators? Uh impress you from the short time that uh, Kenny McIntyre's had to get and his coach have had to put together uh, a roster? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they had to put together something real quick, so you got to give Kenny credit. Um, I thought they did a good job. I mean, they'll be a, they'll be a good team in the league. Uh, um, you know, a lot better expansion than he thought. I thought they're, they're, they're like I said, I thought their DBs were, were pretty exceptional. Um, they can, uh, you know, offensively they're going to struggle. I didn't think their offense was, was nothing to, I mean, because our defense is pretty good. But uh, their defense is pretty good, too. And lastly, before we go to first commercial break, um, you've got a lot of practice on your two-point conversions, which <laughs> won't always be an option for us. But yeah. were you satisfied with the way those plays went? Well, yeah, I didn't want to show them all, but I had to. You know, you have a list of about three or four plays that you want to run as a two-point conversion in the season. And unfortunately, I had to run every one of them because we had to go for it every time. So. Uh, but I think we converted on a couple of them, so it was pretty good. Well, for those who didn't catch it, uh, the opening night uh, loss for the Lions was a, f a nip, nip and tuck uh, job. It was 42-40, and the Lions were ahead a good chunk of the game. Uh, fell behind late and just didn't have that option of going for the chippy field goal. Well, yeah, but it, it was weird. It was a game where, you know, you look like you were out of it, then we get the ball back with 30 seconds left, down by eight. And, you know, actually, they, had a, they, they scored a touchdown, missed the extra point, which kept us in the game. If they had made that extra point at nine points, it was game's over. But uh, they missed it, so it gave us a chance. And we actually drove the field and scored with, you know, what, like 18 seconds left or something. And we missed a two-point conversion tied right. to go to overtime. And so there's a lot of situations in the game. It was a great arena game, back and forth, back and forth, and all the difference and onside kicks and last-minute scoring and two-point plays to tie. And, all the things you expect out of arena football. So it was a really exciting game from a fan standpoint, but unfortunately, I'm a coach and I had to take the L. So, how do you uh, how do you resolve the kicking issue now? We're at midweek, so who have you got lined uh, up? We signed Blake Erickson out of South Carolina State. Blake played a Billings, uh, played some indoor ball, uh, big leg, uh, 
uh, played with Mason Espinoza. Uh, he came down and tried out. I liked him a lot. So uh, what we're fine now is the transaction went through, we're cleared, and uh, you'll see Blake on Friday night. That sounds great. We can't go too wrong with a far west kicker after Tyler Rouser last year. <laughs> Jason Gibson finds the big legs in the west side of the, of the USA. Anyway, folks, we're going to take a little break here, uh, show you some of our fine TV sponsors on Roar Time. Back with more in just a moment. Every day, men and women from communities across this nation serve as reserve citizen airmen. I am proud to defend our nation. Proud to be part of a team that helps make a difference. I am proud to be part of something larger than me and to serve my country. We celebrate those who have served and those who are proudly serving in the Air Force Reserve. Our mission is to fly, fight, and win in air, space, and cyberspace. I am proud to be a member. I am proud, proud to protect our Proud to serve in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Thanks, Dr. J. My back feels so much better. Now tell me where I can go for my headaches. Really? You don't need to go anywhere else. That's what we do. Well, what about my shoulder? That's what we do. Pinch nerve? That's what we do. Well, what about this problem? That's what we do. Sciatica? With almost a half a million patient visits over the last 34 years, don't just take my word for it. Ask a friend. Call Dr. J. Broadwin and Associates today. Welcome to the Columbus campus of Georgia Military College. At GMC Columbus, students participate in community events, community service, and student activities. Join the excitement at GMC Columbus, a college for its community. Apply today at gmc.edu. Hi, I'm Charles. And I'm Tony with Midas here in Columbus, Georgia. Did you know that 84,000 people in the Chattahoochee Valley go hungry every day? So we partner with Feeding the Valley Food Bank here in Columbus, Georgia. Every oil change feeds up to five people, or you can drop off food donations at either one of our locations. Together we can drive out hunger. Come visit us at either one of our Columbus locations. We're located at 315 13th Street or 1631 Manchester Expressway. We're back with the first 2019 in-season edition of Roar Time. Rick Jacobson, along with head coach of the Columbus Lions, Jason Gibson. Coming off the, uh, the uh, very tight and uh, excruciating, we might say, 42-40 <laughs> loss to the Orlando Predators, but it's 14-game season. One loss will really define nothing. And uh, let's, uh, before we start, previewing Friday night's home opener. Tell us a little bit how, how you felt the defensive did. You made a mention of the backs. I thought the defense the played well. Um, they had a lot of stops. They had a fourth down stop um, all the way across the board. The things that we wanted to make the improvement on on defense from last year, we did. We talked about uh, not you know busting coverages, the big play with our DBs. I thought Rico Johnson played really well out of Georgia. Rico and Shadow and Demario Donnell uh, played well. That was a good little group. We've been trying to kind of mix-match DBs to figure out where we're at, and uh, they played well. Uh, it was a great game back for um, Greg Hall Jr. out of Auburn. I thought he did well. Kendrick Washington had a great game. Yorick Jones. J.T. Surratt's a force to be reckoned with at nose guard. Mm -hmm. uh, he played well. Michael Fanning, again, another one. So all the way across the board, that defense is going to continue to get better, which is scary. That's scary. They're pretty good. So... Let's say they – would you have a number in mind, maybe 40 points or less, that is yep. their defensive I mean, goal? Technically, if we keep teams under 50 points, we should win the game. The offense lost that game. Offensively, we didn't, we're not yelling yet. We're not meshing yet. We dropped some passes, you know, kicker. We didn't do the things we need to do in offense winning the game. You can't win arena football games scoring under 50 points. Mm -hmm. um, and I think our defense is going to be that team that's going to keep people under 50. If they do that, we're, we're going to be in every – single game. Here's something that comes to mind. Last year, one of our great options was what a good runner quarterback Mason Espinosa was at the goal line. Does Luke have that kind of skill? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, when you have that style of offensive line as big as they are, you can put me back there and I can run it. So, um, so yeah, and, and Ronnie can run it, so we'll be fine. You know, Luke had a rushing touchdown in the game. Uh, I think late in the third quarter, I can't remember. So, but defensively, they just, uh, they're just going to keep getting better and better and better and uh, really excited about him. Really excited about him. 
So going after the quarterback, um, you, you've got pressure on the quarterback from the D-line. Um, your linebackers, you said, were going to be a real strength of this team. And the D-backs, you weren't sure about. but you They liked- played well, yeah. I was shocked. Not, not shocked. We just didn't have a lot of experience with them together. I mean, that's the hardest thing to – to, to has to jail on and ran teams, those three DVs, they really have to be able to communicate and trust each other. Uh, Shadow had a pick. DeMario Donnell had a pick. I mean, I'm not sure if we had seven picks all of last year on defense. Mm. And we've already gotten two in game one. So that's exciting. And, and But we talked about it as a team. Those interceptions are because of the D-line. Sacks are because of the defensive backs. And they should all take pride in it. And they did. And... They, you know, they, they got after it. They had a bunch of sacks, too. I think J.T. Surratt had two sacks. Ken Washington had a sack. Um, so, Do you feel that there are any holes at all in this roster, or it's just a matter of players developing and learning the game? That's a really good question. Um, you know, right now, going into the Jacksonville game, I'm going to sit there and say I don't think there's any holes. There might be, there might be two spots maybe we can upgrade at um, as a whole team. But, you know, if we're sitting here next week and we get smoked by Jacksonville, there is a lot of holes. So, I mean, who knows? Um, but I, I feel pretty confident in what we have. And I think if we can stick it together. I liked what Maine did last year. Maine started out last year with a whole bunch of guys nobody knew, you know, for the most part. And they stayed together the whole season. By the end of the season, they were probably the hottest, team in, they were the, hottest team in the league. What do you take from uh, – I imagine by now you've had a chance to see some game fill from the Jacksonville-New York game. Right. Big surprise, New York cool. streets. I would have uh, bet my house on that one. So, And you almost did last week. Yeah. I think it may have been the truck. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, with New York surprising you, now that you've seen some, some film and tape, um, how do you assess Jacksonville? They still got – I mean, I mean I'm, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff, like I say, you know, Jacksonville's a rival. I mean, they still got, on paper, they got the best players and some of the best players in the league, you know, especially on offense. And so when you look at, you know, what is it either what they didn't do or is it what New York did? Who, who knows? I mean, on paper, that offense should score 70 points a game. So you either got to – I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in that camp, couldn't tell you. I'm trying, trying to bite my lip. So, but on paper, they should be scoring 70 points a game. Remember about a year ago at this time, Derek Ross was the big thing down in Jacksonville. Yeah. Is he with them this year? No, he's not. Uh, they got another fullback, big kid, uh, Squirewell. I can't remember his last name. He's pretty good. I like him. We've talked to him before. I think he went to camp with the Packers. Uh, he's a pretty good fullback. Of course, they got Jarman. They got Deron Neal. I think, I think Gilchrist is the best receiver on that team. I like him a lot. Um, he's, he's an exceptional player. He's a big threat. You know, when we game plan, you know, that's – that's somebody we got to stop. They got Devin Wilson, who's a great player. They got Jonathan Bain, who's a great player. Um, you know, you just keep going across the board. You know, who do you stop? But apparently, New York figured it out because they only scored forty something points. And I happened to catch a, a sniff of your scouting report that uh, was, stays in the office, of course. But I, I noticed that you point out the player's strengths, but a few places that you feel that your guys can slow them down and maybe catch a weakness. Well, yeah, because you always want to be, uh, you know. Football is information, and the more information you have about somebody, you know, the better prepared you are. And so um, we point out the strengths and we point out the weaknesses that we see and then what we're going to attack and what we got to be careful for. And, uh, you know, we pass it out to the players, and, and, and then we go from there, and then we watch film all week long, and then we reiterate everything that we saw on film with what we put on paper, then we take it to the practice field. So we try to – you know, put it on paper, put it on film, and then put it on the practice field and combine all that together and make sure that we're prepared for what they're going to do. found it interesting that you made a, a point of one player shall rename, remain nameless because I don't think I could name him, but a guy who could be affected by being physical with him. Uh, it's, it was the kind of thing that an average fan might not realize, but uh, you're getting under some player's skin. There's some psychology involved in your strategy, not just physical talent. Elements. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, um, yeah, there's certain players and certain things that you do that you just learn tendencies of people. You learn what set people off, and you learn uh, – you, you try to put people in an uncomfortable position and see how they react. And some people, when they get pressured or they, they get uncomfortable, they, uh, they act different. And you try to push those buttons. 
We're all excited about Friday night. We're going to kick off a little late because of the extension uh, right. of pregame activity, but Friday night against Jacksonville, listed game time, 7 o'clock, a little bit late start. We were still opening up at 6 right. for the general public, but we're going to introduce the new Bud Light Party Zone right. pregame tailgating activity. Yeah, I think it's going to open up at well, I think it's going to open up at uh, maybe 4 p.m. Outside, we'll have some music, some games. Uh, I think the, you know, the players will walk through there as they're coming to the game. Um, the tailgating will be set up out front there. Uh, Budweiser will be out there passing out gifts and, and giveaways and things like that. And it's, it's a great new little area. You'll, the, the Rivertown Buick GMC trucks will be out front, uh, you know, big inflatable entrance. So it's something different. We're trying it. You know, make a better fan experience. And our season ticket holders are invited to come a little earlier? All season ticket holders can, can access that a little earlier and use that entrance to come in so they can have access to the elevator, access to uh, some merch specials, also have access to the stairwells to get to their seats, and uh, they'll have the media banner set up for VIP picture taking and all that stuff. So it's a little different. It could be exciting. Yeah, one of the great touches we've added this year, your suggestion, if I recall, was that we've got um, – our VIP season ticket holders, one of the perks that came with their tickets if they opted in for it was to be on the field for player introductions. Yeah, we're going to see how this works out. Jacksonville does it. They do a great job of it, and I like it. So one of the perks is you get to come down on the field during warm-ups and then be out there for the intros and for the uh, national anthem. And we got about, I think, 67 people signed up for it. I think it's a, a terrific thing because um, one of our highlights over the years, as I recall it, is the uh, – taking kids' birthday parties and certain youth groups into the locker room before a game. Can you imagine that in any other sport? No, I can't. I mean, I can imagine being at Mercedes-Benz hanging out at the Falcons' locker room while they're getting ready. So yeah. that is pretty cool when you think about it like that. And during warm-ups, often there'll be uh, youth groups being carefully watched, of course, but at the back of the end zone, uh, the thrill, the access of being there, the professional players oh, must yeah. be something else. It's fun just to be on the field and – Hang out. So that's there's so much going on in this game. It's, uh, I mean, it's exhausting, but it's 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 come a long way. I mean, I'm proud to be a part of it. And it's a headache on us uh, from a staff standpoint to deal with the football and, and everything. But it, but the fact that we have that many people lined up to do different different activities is, is great for the program. Let's mention too that a great Lions sponsor for our entire history, Kinetic Credit Union, yes. is providing. Beautiful magnetic schedules for all fans as they come in. It was pretty cool. It's a magnetic schedule, and you can also write notes on it, and uh, it's actually pretty cool. Kinetic's been with us as long as I've been here. Uh, Mark Littleton and, and, uh, and uh, Janice. Uh, Jeff Davis, Janet yes. Davis, uh, who retired, and a great sponsor. Uh, I bank there as well. Um, it's a great place Great place to us. You know, it's, it's so interesting to me. You mentioned Mark Littleton, CEO of Kinetic Credit Union. When I came to Columbus 25 years ago, I worked with Mark. He was the play-by-play -play radio announcer for the Columbus Red Sticks baseball team. Yep. And uh, I'm so proud of his uh, Yo, He's done a great job with Kinetic. They've grown that place big, and it's a great place to bank. And like I said, I bank there, and uh, go see him. And Rivertown Ford, uh, uh, excuse me, Rivertown Buick GMC, the sign-up process, have you heard anything about how many people are registering for tomorrow? There's the a lot, because you can sign up online. You can also sign up at the fan center. Uh, during the game, and then we're going to draw a lucky fan to go out there and, and kick that football for a chance to win a truck. So I'm excited about it. If it works out really great, we may do it every game. I don't know yet. Uh, I know this. Every time I get in that truck to bring it down here to set it up, I get closer and closer to buying one. So it's a good little trick by them, um, but it, that's, that's what they do. You know, you test drive one of those things, and, and you're hooked. And uh, let me mention, since you brought up the Lions Fan Center, the area where we have a contest uh, registration, where prizes are awarded, where we er initiate past the pigskin from, that has been moved. We've been from around uh, Section 107, top of the left-hand stairs, for years. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, in conjunction with the Civic Center um, plans, we're now over going to be over on your side, behind Section 102, midfield, on what's thought of as the home side. Um, come see us at the Fan Center because we've got everything you need to help enjoy the game from birthday party information to uh, how you can bring a group out, where to claim your prizes. And we've got some awfully good ones from some of our program advertisers, uh, how you can rent a concourse table for the evening and such. So Friday at 730 against the Jacksonville Sharks, couldn't have a better opener, could we? No, I mean, 
Friday night, get out of work, give away a truck, magnet schedule giveaway, Jacksonville Sharks. Oh, my. Yes, and it's uh, going to give the players and, and staff a full weekend off for the most part. Uh, <laughs> going into a bye week, too. Whew. Yeah, that's terrific. So so, so <clears throat> normally we'd be playing Saturday night. Right. And the others in the league will be. Mass and Carolina are having a re repeat battle from last week. Correct. Yeah, that one shocked me. Um, so, yeah, they got a rematch going in. I think it's at Carolina this week, so it's their home opener. So, uh, I, you know, don't listen to me on picks. All my picks were wrong this week, every one of them, even, even mine. So... Our game, so uh, whatever I think is going to win, just put all your money on the other team. Yeah, uh, the Carolina uh, whomped up on the Massachusetts Pirates a little right. bit, but I would, even though it's a change of venue and this one's in Greensboro, it wouldn't surprise me if Massachusetts comes right back. Yeah, they will. I mean, it's just the way the league is. I mean, I'm glad to see New York and Orlando um, be competitive because that way now every game, that's what makes the league great. Every game is a game. You don't want to have any pigeons on your schedule. Oh, well, I'm playing... New York this week, and and they're going to be you know 86 to 10. You don't want that from a league standpoint, and that's what makes it great. And if every game matters, now you got your viewership. Okay, well with that uh, point made, let's take another break here, and when we come back, we're going to go through a little bit um, about the plays of the week, something that we really enjoy uh, and have some very good sponsors for here on Roar Time. Join us in just a minute. We'll have a lot more. At Rivertown Buick GMC, we're proud to support the Columbus Lions, our hometown team. And we support you with our low price promise. We'll meet or beat any dealership's price, or you get $1,000. Plus, Rivertown Buick GMC always has your back with the right way guarantee, featuring limited lifetime powertrain protection. And of course, we always give you a deal to roar about. Only at Rivertown Buick GMC. USAA gives me the peace of mind and the security just like the Marines did. At one point I did change to a different company with car insurance and I was not happy with the customer service. We have switched back over and we feel like we're back home now. We're the Williams family and we're USAA members for life. It's love your car month at Napa. I love a good filter. And whether you live under the hood, horsepower, or have never popped the hood, door power, your car deserves some love. That's why all month long we've got great deals for your vehicle. Because when it comes to caring for your car, all you need is Napa know-how. Napa know-how! Final segment of Roar Time in this first in-season edition here. We're going to finish this show with a few minutes of discussion of uh, uh, some of the plays of the week from our uh, opening night in Orlando last Saturday night. And uh, let you know, too, that CTV will, of course, CTV Beam will be televising all our games uh, the home producing telecasts of the home games started with Friday night, uh, kickoff 7.30 at the Columbus Civic Center, but airtime will be 7 o'clock to, to our knowledge, best of our knowledge. So we're very proud of the partnership. CTV Beam is going to be out in force. There's going to be a very large contingent up in the hospitality suites along with our friends at Spring Harbor. Yeah, I mean, Spring Harbor's bringing 100 people. CTV Beam's bringing 160. Uh, be a packed house. So. It, it's going to be a terrific, terrific atmosphere, folks, and, and uh, we've had very few Friday night games in our history, and I'm quite excited about that. I think it's a little bit more of a, of a, of a wild night out. I kind of like the Friday nights. I'd like to see us maybe make that like a, uh, a tradition. You know, NFL opens up the season on Thursday night football. I'd like the Friday night. So, you know, get off work, grab everybody, grab the kids, go watch a game, then you got the whole weekend. It just works. It really works better for everybody. And I'm being a little selfish because I like to have the whole weekend to myself too, but um, anyway. So this, uh, this home opener will uh, lead into a bye week early in the season. Was there a reason the league scheduled a bye week so early? Just the way the schedule worked out. Scheduling. Scheduling has stuff to do with the availability of the arena. It has nothing to do. We don't, we don't own the arenas like the NFL does. So it's not about, hey, you're going to play on this weekend. It's whatever dates are open. You've got to try to make all that work, and it's, it's, it's a lot. Yes, and graduation season's coming up, and yep. the Civic Center has Disney on ice and, and many major events. So... Um, We'll take that third week off, and I'm, I'm coming off a pretty brutal training camp. You probably, the players are probably it's really not bad. I mean, training camp two weeks, bye week, then you got three, four weeks, and we got a bye week for more a week, and then you finish the season out. So, from a body standpoint, it works well. 
I mean, we're already banged up. We played one game, so um, it, it works well for us. Any injury worth noting that's significant? Nope. That's what I like to hear, <laughs> and I hope you do too, folks. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, plays of the week um, from week number one and start off uh, with Allstate Insurance agent Sean McGarry's good hands catch of the game. Ooh, Paris Mack, man. Paris Mack. He gets the uh, Sean McGarry Allstate good hands catch of the game. Paris caught a pass. He's a rookie, but he caught it over the wall, flipped over the wall. You know, as long as you maintain possession, it's, it's a touchdown, and he did. It was a great catch. He had another catch. He could have won the award twice, but, um, you know, we laughed and told him that he's that he uh, not a rookie anymore once you go over that wall, and it was a phenomenal catch. I remember watching uh, that late catch. He he almost took it to the house for the, what would have been the, the lead touchdown on that uh, last play at the end of the right, game, a right, long right. 40-foot cross Yeah, he ball. tracked that thing down because that ball was way out there, and he just uh, he can fly, and uh, – it was a great catch. Anyway, you pointed out his speed uh, last week, and um, and he flashed it, no question about right. it. Let's go over to the Spring Supply Napa Auto Parts offensive player of the game. <laughs> I'd give you stats, but we don't have them, so <laughs> that's a little. That's a little. I did hear five touchdown catches. Yeah, he had a lot. I mean, he's going to he Bones going to lead the league in receiving. I think he had double digit catches. He had over 100 yards receiving. He had. Five touchdowns. Uh, you know he's he's just getting it done, and we're and we don't even know what we're doing yet. That's what's scary. We're just we're still figuring it out. You know we're out on a first date. We don't even know each other. And and you know, folks, Bones Magante is going to be one of the perhaps the most interesting character in Lions history. I'd have <laughs> to say this: How many fans out there know that he actually created his own name? This is not his given birth name. <laughs> Uh, do you know the story behind that? No, you have to ask him. He has different characters. He can do it all. He can kick. He can catch. Tells you he can throw. I'm not sure. Uh, he does a lot with kids. He has his own uh, trademark, Believe in Bones. Uh, he's a great marketer. Uh, he's got some kid camps coming this summer. I mean, that, guy, <laughs> that guy's special. He's, and I've seen he's a, face, a, face yard po a Facebook post that there's going to be the Boneyard. Boneyard. I'm not quite sure what it consists of, but... Right. Uh, he is a, a very engaging guy, fans. You'll, you'll enjoy Bones Bagante and his tenure as a Lion. Let's slide over to the collision surgeons of Columbus, a big hit of the game. Uh, Kendrick Washington. I think Kendrick came off on a sack one time, and he just mashed the quarterback. You know, it was a good game back because Kendrick and uh, Greg Hall Jr. are coming off of season-ending injuries last year. So this was their first game back, and I thought both of them played well. And uh, Ken continues to bring it. You know, I, I joke at Ken, he's getting a little up there in age. But uh, he gets after it, and uh, he smacked him. It was a good one. He really missed things this year. Mind if I just take a second to ask you uh, why we haven't seen Marte Sears back on the field? Uh, he's still recovering from a knee injury from last year. He had a, a knee surgery, so he has to be cleared by the doctor, and then we'll, be, we'll go from there. Okay. And our, our fourth and final play of the week, um, although I'm going to ask you one more beyond this, Sponsored play of the week would be the uh, Air Force Reserve defensive player of the game. Shadow Finnick. Shadow played great. We, we thought Shadow would come back and be the, the main guy on defense. He did it. He had a pick. He had a bunch of pass breakups. Uh, he didn't let anything over the top. You know, no post route corners. He just played a great game, game one. He's a name that's make, he's making a name for himself already in week one. I'm so proud of him and I uh, can't say enough about him. You know, we have a segment uh, this week, we've had it, we want to have it all year long, called Lions in the Community. And I'm trying to right. think, did you have any time to do anything with the players uh, appearance-wise this week? They're, they're all over the place. It's just you never know because there's so much going on where they're at. Um, you know, Haley and Haley Dukes does stuff for us and, and line stuff's up for the players. Uh, try to get back out to the schools, to get back out. We got a little program at one of the elementary schools where we eat with the kids for lunch. So we may do that. Um, but it's just so busy. Yeah, and, and we covered this last week. It was such a busy week. I wasn't sure there'd be anything left to right. do. And I thought, too, with your road trip late in the week that you might not have had a chance to, to assemble anything. Well, fans, the, the contest or the play of the game is not yet sponsored, but we're looking for one. How about uh, if you were to pick a special teams player of the game, someone who was the most aggressive, maybe uh, made some key tackles. Uh, we did not have the kicker. 
So I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but could you pick someone? Bagante. There you go. He kicked off. He kicked the onside kick, which was a good onside kick at that. Um, yeah, I mean, Bones. The guy can do a little of everything. Yeah. And he was, he was a, a star at the University of Cincinnati some time ago. Mm -hmm. right? a little, one of the older players in the league. Yes. Well, folks, there you have it. Uh, plays of the week for week number one. We'll have some videotaped highlights, obviously, from this Friday's home opener when we do next week's Roar Time. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition. We will be back uh, uh, every week. Airtime is going to be 7.30, uh, usually followed by the home telecast of the previous weekend's game. Thanks for joining us. This has been Roar Time with head coach Jason Gibson.